Hey guys, this is Charles Lee Glider, Extension Lead Scientist at the University of Kentucky. And today what we're going to talk about is tank mixing and herbicide tank mixing. And just a few of the things that uh, we need to pay attention to when we're tank mixing herbicides to make sure we have compatibility of those herbicides. So if we tank mix or mix our products in the wrong order or without enough water, uh, we can cause ourselves a lot of issues and cause ourselves a lot of headaches uh, when products precipitate out or they gel up and can cause a lot of nightmares. And I'm sure many of you have seen some of those situations where guys end up having uh, precipitates at the bottom of the tanks or those gels, and it makes a real big mess and a mess that's not really easy or fun to clean up. So today we just want to talk about a couple, two of those situations or two things we can do to help avoid some of those situations. And so we're going to do this all today in just little 500 ml bottles. And so anytime you're doing a new tank mix, it's always a good idea to take a smaller amount or do a jar test and that's just taking a jar and doing a mix ahead of time to make sure all of your products are compatible and it, the, that the mixing order that you're doing is compatible. So the first one we're going to look at here today uh, is this is a one of the newer products to the market as far as the formulation goes and that is in list one. So uh, many of the, the many farmers uh, in the northern plains specifically north dakota adopted this technology very early on so fortunately they were able to find out a few things for us about uh, some of the issues that you might have it's a great product a great technology we just have to remember a few things when we're tank mixing it so again this is for enlist one now if you're using enlist one and that's just 240 choline more than likely you're going to be mixing it with glyphosate most guys want to go with enlist one rather than enlist duo because they can put in their own glyphosate at whatever rate you want to use the thing we need to be aware of is that if we're mixing with a potassium salt glyphosate so roundup power max is an example of a potassium salt glyphosate uh, many of our Generic formulations are actually IPA formulations, uh, and there's also some DMA formulations. But if it's a potassium salt formulation, so make sure you look on that label to see. You can also look in the AGR, in AGR6 uh, to see. We have uh, on page 21, we have all the glyphosate formulations and what salts they are. So if you're mixing with a potassium salt glyphosate, we have to make sure that we're doing the right order and we're using enough water. So what I'm going to show you here today is... The right way to do it and the wrong way to do it as far as mixing a potassium salt glyphosate and enlist one first thing i want to show you here is we have two different bottles so this one here these bottles hold 500 mils and with this one uh, or with a black line is 500 mils so we can pretend this is a 500 gallon tank or 500 mils and with this one i put in 400 mils so i haven't filled it all the way but i've put the majority of the water in it now in this scenario, again, same size bottle, here on the line that would be 500 mils, and I put in 100 milliliters. So this would be the equivalent of, if I had a 500 gallon tank, I only put in 100 gallons before I start mixing. So low water volume situation here, and uh, anytime you're using an induction tank, same scenario, low water situation. So we'll start off here by looking at the correct way to do this, and what we'll do is I'm going to put in my enlist one first and again I have lots of water I have the majority of the water that I'm going to use in here and what I'm going to do is we're going to just do a little bit of slight agitation here so we're agitating we're making sure that product gets into solution it doesn't take a whole lot for enlist one uh, to get into solution so we do that first and then we're going to take our Roundup Power Max. So here's our Roundup Power Max. We've already got our Enlist 1 in there. Our Enlist 1's in the solution. Then we're going to put in our Power Max. And we're going to take that. We're going to agitate it. So get it into solution. And then finally what we'll do is we'll top that off to put it at our 500 milliliters. Okay, so with this one, you can see that everything's in the solution, nothing's precipitated out. And now we're going to look at this situation where we have low water volumes 
or 100 mils out of a 500 mil bottle would be like using 100 gallons of water or starting off with 100 gallons of water in a 500 gallon tank. And with the last one, I mixed them separately. I made sure they were in the solution before I, I put in the next product. I'm gonna do worst case scenario on this one and I'm gonna put them in just both at the same time, low water volume, put them in there, and then we'll start agitating it. We'll agitate it a little bit. And then finally we'll come in here and we'll put in our water and top that off to 500 mils. And so on this one, what you'll notice is that that potassium salt on that glyphosate precipitated out uh, when I mix them together at the same time in a low water volume situation. Okay, the next scenario that we're going to talk about is just tank mixing order and what we need to put in the tank first uh, and then last. So anytime we're tank mixing, uh, if you're using any dry flowables or any dry formulations, those need to go in first and then your EC formulations and then your liquid formulations and then finally your adjuvants. So the one exception to that rule is if you're using water conditioners like ammonium sulfate, those need to go in first because if we put those in last, they're not being effective. Water conditioners have to go in first to condition that water and then we can put in the rest of our products in that order of dries, uh, your emulsifiable concentrates, and then all the way up to your liquids. If we don't do that, we can cause ourselves some issues. And one thing is if we put in an oily adjuvant or an oily product first, such as an EC, and then we put in a dry, uh, we can cause ourselves a lot of issues and the dry may not go into solution because we coat it in that oil. So I'm gonna show you kind of that worst case scenario today, uh, putting in an adjuvant or an MSO very first and then a dry and then doing it into the correct orders. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do this the correct way and we'll do that on this bottle right here. And so again, what I'm mixing, what I'm gonna mix here today is uh, we're gonna do a, a burn down mix that we might use in something like a, a mare's tail field. We're gonna use Metribuzin, uh, Verdict, Roundup, and uh, Glyphosate. Um, and then we're gonna put MSO in there uh, as our adjuvant package. And so if we're doing that, if I'm using a dry, uh, this is just a 75% DF Metribuzin, so it's a dry Metribuzin. So if we're doing that tank mix, I want that Metribuzin to go in first. Okay, I want that dry flowable going in first. And then what I want to make sure to do is I want to make sure to agitate that tank and make sure that dry gets in uh, to that formulation or gets into that tank and gets suspended or dissolved into my tank at that point in time. So uh, you can see I'm not agitating this vigorously and I'm not shaking it vigorously. It's just it's some very gentle agitation and it gets into to solution fairly quickly. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my liquid. So I'm going to add my verdict and my glyphosate. So we'll put that product in next, the verdict. And again, before I go any further, before I put my next product in, I just want to give that a little bit of agitation. So, you know, this would be in real life, it'd just be running the agitation on your tank while you go to get the next product. So, again, we don't need a lot of vigorous agitation, but just getting that solution mixed up. And then lastly, I'll put in my uh, glyphosate as my last herbicide to go in. So there's my glyphosate. And again, we'll agitate that just slightly. Again, this would be something just running that agitation in your tank while you go to grab the next product. And then the last thing to go in here is going to be my MSO, my methylated seed oil. And as I put that in there, you can see how it is an oil, so it sits right on top of that surface initially, and then we'll get it all mixed in there. So this is the correct mixing order. Again, those adjuvants are the last things to go in. And the only thing that might go in after those is if you're using a micronutrient, that is the very last thing that needs to go into the tank if you're choosing to, to do that. So those are the very last things to go in. So 
There you can see uh, the right mixing order. Uh, we don't see, uh, the big thing is, we'll look at the bottom here, and you don't see any of those metribuzin pellets floating around in the bottom. Okay, now we're going to do it the incorrect way, okay? And we're going to kind of do worst case scenario here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to put in my MSO first. So this should never go in first, but we're just going to do it to show and put us in a worst case scenario here. We're going to put that in there. And you guys can see there, and I'm not going to agitate this at all, but you can see there how the MSO sits right on top. We're putting an oil and a water together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I want to put in my dry before I put in my liquid herbicides. So that's what I'm going to do next. Now, remember, I didn't agitate this. And as I pour in this metribuzin, you're going to see it kind of sits right on top at first. And that's because it's sitting in that oil. And actually, we're covering all of those pellets, that dry formulation with oil. And that's going to make it really difficult for that to get into solution. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put in our herbicides. We'll put in our verdict. And again, I'm not agitating this at all. I'm just putting product in. And then here's your glyphosate. Okay, so remember with this one, I put in the MSO first and then my dry and then my two uh, liquid formulations into here. Now we'll go ahead and we'll agitate this again. I'm not going to agitate it vigorously. I'm going to agitate it the same way I did that last one. So we're not going to agitate it real vigorously. We're just going to go back and forth with it like that. So what you can see here is you can see that all of that metribuzin is still sitting. We have not gotten that into solution yet uh, with the agitation we have. And again, what happens is as that went into the tank, that layer of oil was sitting on top and it coated. So the way these dry granules work is we're trying to get them to dissolve into the solution. It's like putting... Uh, sugar in your tea, right? We need to get it dissolved in solution. But when we went through that oil and coat these in oil, they're never going to get into solution or they're going to take forever to get into solution. And they're going to take way more agitation than we need to get them in there. And these right here are going to cause um, a lot of issues with your nozzles and your screens. They're going to clog up screens. They're going to clog, clog up nozzles. And the other thing is we're not getting this product to the field the way we need to get it. So again, that's why dries go in first and they certainly go in before any adjuvant or any oil-based product like an EC uh, to avoid this type of situation. And then again, here is the uh, the tank mix in the right order. You can see uh, in those dry flowables do this. It does settle out with time. That's why we have to have tank agitation. But with just a little bit of agitation, it goes right back into solution. You don't see those flowable pellets, you don't see those pellets or granules sitting in the bottom of the tank and just a little bit of agitation. And if you let this sit overnight, it'll all fall out of solution. But again, just a little agitation, it'll come right back into solution. And we don't have those pellets that is doing it in the right or the correct tank mix of work. All right, so that is just a short demonstration of a couple of scenarios. There's a lot of other scenarios where we can get ourselves in trouble, but just two very quick and simple scenarios of making sure we're doing the correct tank mixing order as well as being aware of some of our tank mix compatibility issues that we have with some of our new product, newer products like the Enlist One product. If we tank mix it correctly, uh, we do it in high water volume situations and we let both products get into solution individually, we won't have any issue with that product and it's a wonderful product that works really well, but just making sure you guys are aware of that situation. So just wanted to go over a few tank mixing things here uh, today and a couple scenarios that we want to try to avoid. Thank you.